Hello, Do you hear me? Yes, sir. So let's start then. Good uh, afternoon. I'll be talking about Vanda Hadiji's. And uh, today we'll try to cover mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation, if time permits. Um, let's go with the uh, most of the uh, valvular heart disease uh, are usually because of rheumatic fever leading to heart disease. And most of the in around half of the people who have rheumatic fever and heart disease may land up uh, in rheumatic uh, valvular heart disease. And of which uh, in the valvular heart disease, two thirds are women, so these are very common in females. However, even though the patient had um, valvular heart disease because of rheumatic fever, only around 50% of them will be history of rheumatic fever and, or chorea. So even though patient um, doesn't have history suggestive of rheumatic fever, uh, the valvular heart disease may be because of rheumatic fever. And most of the time, mitral valves are uh, involved, either in the form of mitral stenosis or mitral deposition. Uh, the second most common is aortic valve, dentroacusurion, and least um, affected one is pulmonary valves. There will be a pathological process, and in which there will be a uh, progressive fibrosis leading to chronic rheumatic heart disease. And before going through these uh, valvular heart disease, I just want to uh, mm, summarize what you have learned in physiology. Actually, the blood will flow back to the heart from either inferior vena cava or uh, the superior vena cava, comes to the right atrium, then ventricles, and to the pulmonary arteries, to the lungs. And from the lungs, they will come back into the left atrium, we know all these, and from the left ventricle, and then to the overtime. Why I'm the, uh, uh, the revising this one is that, okay, now, you know, if, the, if there are problem with this, suppose in the mitral valve, okay, now there's a problem, there may be two kinds of problem, one is uh, narrowing of a valve or leaking of valve. If you say that there is a narrowing of valve, then uh, it is, we call that one as a mitral stenosis. If there are uh, pulmonary stenosis or aortic stenosis or tricuspid stenosis, if there are leaking of valve, then we call that one as a regurgitation because the, the 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 blood from actually the blood has to go from ventricles to the uh, ventricles to the either to the uh, pulmonary or to the aorta. So in the regurgitant lesions, what will happen is that blood from from this ventricle. Suppose this is the right ventricle. So instead of going into the pulmonary arteries. Uh, part of the blood will go into the atrium, and this is called uh, regurgitation. So there is a leak over here. So there are two kinds of pathologies that may happen. One is stenosis, and another is regurgitation. So whenever there is a stenosis, and if there is a uh, if, the, if the blood from atrium to the ventricles, um, uh, the, when the blood passes from uh, this valve through this valve. If there is a stenosis, then what will happen is that there will be a, a resistance and there will be a loss of laminar flow. So because of these, there will be an additional sound called murmur. So in a patient who has a suppose mitral stenosis or mitral, let's talk about mitral stenosis in mitral valve. If there is a um, stenosis over here, when the atrium contracts, okay, then the blood will blood will flow from atrium into the left ventricle. And there is a stenosis over here. What will happen is that the the flow laminar flow will be disturbed, so there will be a murmur over here. And when you know that if when the, the when there is a, a contraction of atrium, that means ventricles are in diastole. So you will have a murmur at the diastolic period. So 
Now, if you talk about regurgitation, then where, when, the, when the ventricles are the left ventricle, suppose, left ventricle contracts, then actually the blood has to go through this aortic valve into the aorta. But if there is a leakage of valve in the mitral area, then what will happen is that a part will go from uh, go through this aortic valve and part will then regurgitate through this mitral valve into the left atrium. So there will be a now uh, um, loss of lamina flow, thus uh, producing murmur, and it's in the systolic period because the left ventricle is contracting. So in regurgitating region, there will be a systolic um, murmur, and in mitral stenosis, there will be a diastolic murmur. Now, whenever there is a either a um, the, this, the, 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 suppose this is a stenotic lesion, then if there is a stenotic lesion, a narrowing of the valve, then what will happen is you need a more pressure from for, uh, to be built up in left atrium to send the blood into the left ventricle. So the, the, the pressure of this left atrium, which is around 4 to 12 millimeter mercury, will then increase. And this may go back into the uh, lungs, causing pulmonary hypertension as well. Now, in regurgitation, what will happen is that the volume of the left atrium will increase, thus later on increases the pressure also, because a part of blood will come back to the left ventricle, sorry, left atrium, um, and so there will be a more of blood in the left atrium and thus causing increase in the pressure of the left atrium and causes pulmonary hypertension in the So this is the basic thing that we have to remember when you go through this valve heart disease. Now, if you look, I'll, I've talked about mitral stenosis or tricuspid, which is similar to tricuspid stenosis. In the aortic or pulmonary valve, the thing becomes completely opposed. Like, now, the blood will flow from ventricles into the aorta or into the pulmonary trunk only when in the systole because they, the, the, when the, the ventricles contract, then the blood will go through this uh, valve. So, in systolic period, if there is a stenosis, then you will have a murmur. So, in stenotic region now, in aortic stenosis or pulmonary stenosis, you will have murmur during systolic period. And in the diastolic period, when this is relaxing, the blood try to come back, come back to the uh, ventricle. And if the valves are intact, then the blood will not come into the ventricles. But if there is a regurgitant lesion, then if the blood comes back and this, this valve is open because of leak, then uh, what will happen is the blood will come back into the ventricles. So in here, in this aortic valve or pulmonary valve, regurgitant lesions will, will produce the diastolic murmur. So this is the completely different, just opposite of mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. So in short, in mitral stenosis, you will have a diastolic murmur. Mitral regurgitation, you will have a systolic murmur. In aortic stenosis, you will have a systolic murmur and in aortic regurgitation, you will have a diastolic murmur. So these are how murmurs are produced. Okay, so you you should know these things, how when we say it's a, a systolic murmur or pan-systolic murmur or diastolic murmur. If the murmur is between S1, first half sound and second half sound, then it's a systolic murmur. If it is between second half sound and first half sound, then it's a diastolic murmur. Okay. Now, if it can, if the systole, the systolic murmur is throughout from first half sound to second half sound, then we call that one as a pan-systolic murmur. If it is like a crescendo, descendo, like this triangular shape, then we call that one as a ejection systolic murmur. Okay. So there will be left systolic murmur like this or 
or the systolic murmur as well sometimes. And in man with diastolic murmur, the the murmur starts after S2 and it continues sometimes even up to uh, S1. So this is a uh, mid-diastolic murmur. So in mid-diastolic murmur, it's generally present with mitral stenosis or tricuspid stenosis. Pan-systolic murmurs are present in mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation. Injection systolic is usually mm, present in aortic stenosis. So I told I also told you in last slide that in aortic stenosis you will have a systolic murmur, mitral regurgitant lesions of mitral or tricuspid you will have a systolic lesion, and uh, in a mitral stenosis or tricuspid stenosis you will have a diastolic murmur. So in mm, only diastolic murmur like th this one is usually present with aortic or pulmonary regurgitation. So this is the summary of our today's class. Okay, now <clears throat> the, in the uh, rheumatic heart disease, uh, the predominantly involves uh, structures of valves, but pericardium and myocardium both can also uh, involve, and these uh, involvement will contribute to heart failure and conduction defects that are present in uh, the heart disease. There may be a fusion of valve commissures with sharpening of collagenemy, which will lead to stenosis or regurgitation or both as well. Uh, they, it's not like that. Uh, it um, means if you have a mitral stenosis, you won't have mitral regurgitation. It's not like that. In a single valve, you can have both mitral stenosis as well as mitral regurgitation. And the, there will be altered hemodynamics, as I told you earlier. There will be uh, there will be a, um, change in the laminar flow. There may be a pressure uh, increase in the pressure or increase in the volume. These are all altered hemodynamics, and which are, these are responsible for damages even in the absence of continuing rheumatic process. So like that, you know, you, you have treated rheumatic fever, but if there is a pathology in the in the valves, then and if that pathology is um, is uh, is large enough uh, to alter the hemodynamics, then even though you treat the rheumatic fever, there will be uh, ongoing damages in the heart, and that will lead to chronic valve heart disease. So you have a mitral valve, uh, valve like a valve, pulmonary valve with stenosis or regurgitation or combinations. Like mitral valve, mitral stenosis may sometimes combine with aortic regurgitation. Aortic regurgitation can combine with mitral regurgitation also. Aortic stenosis may be with aortic mitral stenosis or regurgitation. And you may have mitral stenosis as well as tricuspid regurgitation. So there are, there are many, many combinations and uh, even a single valve can have both the lesions together, like mitral valve stenosis as well as regurgitation also. So let's talk about mitral stenosis. Mm, this valve is this is this is very common uh, valvular heart disease, and two thirds of females. Uh, when the pure or predominant mitral stenosis occurs in forty percent of the patient only, so sixty percent of the patient will have mitral stenosis with other another valve have the heart disease like mitral, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis or our day valve disease, anything, any combination can be there. So um, they are usually combined with another valve heart disease. Usually they are because of rheumatic origin, sometimes it may be because of calcification, congenital or infective in the myocarditis. And we know that normal mitral valve radius is four to six centimeters square. The patient will be asymptomatic till two centimeters square, and less than twenty percent of the patient will remain in sinus rhythm. That means the uh, they will have a regular pulse only in twenty percent of the patients. In other patients, like around eighty percent of the patient will have atrial fibrillation. This is because of uh, the increase in size of left atrium. 
There is another problem with the mitral stenosis. It's, it's a left atrial thrombosis, and that this thrombosis may lead to systemic thromboembolism. You may uh, remember your physi physiology classes, what is thrombus and how it is formed. What is happening in these that if there is a stenosis and uh, there is a loss of lamina flow, then there is a uh, possibility of uh, thrombogenesis. And as there is uh, uh, more blood in the uh, left atrium and there is a loss of this lamina flow, so there is more chances of having thrombus in the left atrium. And together with that, because of the atrial fibrillation also, the, as the patient, um, I said that the, the, it's very common to have atrial fibrillation in mitral stenosis. So because of atrial fibrillation also, there will be more turbulence in the left atrium, causing more prone, prone to thrombosis. And this thrombus can, um, can dislodge at any time and may reach to other parts of the body where we found it as a systemic from embolism. Now, this is just like a, mm, uh, in short, so this is a, there may be a fibrosis calcification of the valley leaflets and fusion of cusps and polytendinies, which causes mitral valve orifice area diminished. So there will be a, a, a decrease in blood flow from left atrium to the left ventricle, following which there will be an increase in left atrial pressure, um, increase in the left atrial pressure. This will cause left atrial dilatation, hypertrophy, causing atrial fibrillation. And because there is a um, pressure rise in left atrium, this will go back to the pulmonary vascular base, causing increase in vascular resistance, pulmonary venous condition, causing pulmonary hypertension. And this is the thing that will lead to breathlessness. So patient will present with breathlessness as well. Okay, so in clinical feature, uh, you'll have a dyspnea, orthopnea, or paroxysmal nocturnal um, uh, fatigue, cough, chest pain, swelling of the body. This swelling of the body um, is usually because of the uh, involvement of right heart because of the primary uh, disease in the uh, mitral valve. So my, in, what, will, what may happen is that, if you give me one second, I can show you. Mm -hmm. Suppose, uh, if there is a pressure rising and this goes back into the pulmonary vessels, then from the pulmonary vessels, it can come to the left ventricle. So there will be change in the left ventricle also with enlargement of left a ventricle causing left ventricular failure and this left ventricular failure will uh, present as uh, swelling of the legs, ascites, uh, hepatomegaly and these may be present in these patients of mitral stenosis. There may be palpitation, hemoptysis and symptoms of thromboembolism or sometimes may be asymptomatic as I told you that the patient becomes symptomatic only when the um, mitral valve area is less than two. Um, there will be small volume pulse with atrial fibrillation. This increase in JVP is also because of right heart failure. The edema, there will be signs of infected endocarditis. Left parasternal heave is because of the uh, ventricular enlargement and atrial enlargement. Um, tapping, there may be tapping uh, pattern of apical impulse. The P2 may be palpable, there will be a diastolic thrill or murmur, S1 will be loud, P2 will be loud, there is an opening snap uh, just before the uh, onset of mid-diastolic murmur at the mitral area. There may be pansystolic murmur in trichospidemia because of involvement of right heart, right heart or right ventricle or because of uh, leading to right ventricular failure. There may be crepitations, tender hepatomegaly, ascites, and signs of thromboembolism. So the, the signs are usually because of 
uh, mitral stenosis itself or maybe because of complications of mitral stenosis like pulmonary hyperhypertension causing palpable P2, um, right heart failure causing uh, this um, uh, pancystolic murmur, tender hepatomegaly ascites and edema with increase in JPP and there may be all other complications like signs of thumbal embolism. Atrial fibrillation is also a complication of mitral stenosis. So, so the signs are combination of the valve itself and the uh, complications. So if you look at it here, the, the, there's a stenosis over here and uh, P2 is loud. Okay, sorry, S1 is loud and P2 is louder than A2. There is an opening step, and after that, there is a mid diastolic murmur. So, this is how you get it in a uh, clinical uh, examination. And if you look at it here, there may be a right ventricular hypertrophy. It's left, ventricular, left ventricular hypertrophy is because of, as there is a pressure increase in left atrium, there will be a dilated left atrium and pulmonary. Uh, vessels, uh, pulmonary vascular bed will be involved, causing increase in pulmonary artery pressure and causing left ventricular hypertrophy as well. Mm. <clears throat> so, in the investigation, we can go for uh, ECG where you can find uh, features of atrial fibrillation uh, or change in the uh, uh, change in the P wave. Uh, right axis deletion, right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, in the x ray, there will be a M, the features of LA enlargement, left atrial enlargement, calcification of mitral valve will be present, enlargement of left, uh, sorry, pulmonary artery and right ventricle may be present in left atrium, sorry, in the chest x ray. Mm, in echo finding, echo is very important uh, investigation and um, you'll find. The, uh, you can even measure the area of the valve, uh, how, what is the uh, left atrial pressure, what is the pressure for in the uh, pulmonary arteries, and we can also see whether there is any uh, enlargement of right ventricle or not with tricuspid regurgitation or not. So ECHO is a very simple, uh, non-invasive and important uh, investigational tool in valve heart disease, not only for mitral stenosis, but for every valve heart disease. Cathic, 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 cardiac catheterization is usually done uh, in patients, those patients who are going for <coughs> uh, operation or surgical management, and uh, you will find a lot of uh, features of uh, mitral valve stenosis and the complications, and even you can quantify whether there are mitral regurgitation also or not, because uh, the decision regarding which kind of treatment you are going to give uh, depends upon these findings. Thyroid function tests are usually done in the patient uh, of mitral stenosis, especially if the patient has got atrial fibrillation also. Complications, hemoptysis, atrial fibrillation, pulmonary edema, infected window varieties. The pressure symptoms, this pressure symptom is because of the enlargement of left atrium. And this will, this will uh, press the, or give pressure to the certain, um, certain structures uh, that are around the left atrium. Like if you, if the left atrium gives pressure to the recurrent laryngeal valve, then there will be a hoarseness of voice, which is also called Ochner syndrome. If it, uh, it presses the left bronchus, then there may be a bronchitis. If it presses the spinal cord, then it, it, the patient can develop paraplegia also. So these are the pressure symptoms, embolism. Um, in differential diagnosis, there, there will be left atrial myxoma or uh, mitral stenosis, uh, the important differential diagnosis. Um, even the severity of mitral stenosis uh, can um, be classified as minimal, mild, moderate, severe, or reactive pulmonary hypertension. It depends upon the mitral valve area and the symptoms. Like if it is uh, more than two, then you won't, you may not have 
symptoms uh, and in the if it is just below two um, it's mild it's dyspnea or exhaustion only patient with give history of shortness of breath or exhaustion only in the moderate you can have a dyspnea orthopnea as well as pnd in severe uh, which is the when the mitral valve area is less than one patient will have dyspnea sorry about missing p over here dyspnea on rest a disability uh, like any NY, NYHC class 4 and bed chair bound. In the pulmonary hypertension, uh, this is similar to that of uh, stage 4, but class 4, but <clears throat> there will be features of right ventricular failure in these patients. So, uh, this is how the severity of mitral stenosis is classified. And this can be Clinically seen or clinically described also, if there is a what is the different distance between uh, second heart sound and uh, uh, opening snap, uh, duration of diastolic murmur according to the gradient across the micro mitral valve, which is usually done uh, with deco uh, or cardiac catheterization. In the management, there are medical or surgical, and uh, in medical, it's more or less all the valve the heart disease we usually um, uh, usually uh, treat in a similar way. Like uh, if the patient has got um, atrial fibrillation, then you can give decoxin or beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, especially non hydropyridine uh, calcium channel blockers like verapamil can be given in these patients. If the patient has got uh, features of failure, then with diuretics, anticoagulants are especially important in those patients who are having atrial fibrillation. Then we give anticoagulants to prevent uh, systemic thromboembolism. Antibiotic prophylaxis is especially given for infected liver arthritis. And uh, in the surgical, is a, it's, it's a definitive treatment there are two like uh, mitral valve valvotomy or commissurotomy uh, which is usually played with mitral valve only and or with the valvular opacity you uh, you you don't have to open the um, uh, heart you 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 send the one uh, catheter through the um, you know, vessels peripheral vessels and at the site of mitral valve you um you 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 put a balloon over there, and with the help of this balloon, you do a valve plastic. Or mitral valve replacement is the one which you replace mitral valve, the the uh, diseased mitral valve. You take out that one and put another uh, artificial valve over there. Mm, I will talk about indications uh, in the mitral regurgitation. <clears throat> Mitral regurgitations are usually common in males. If you remember, uh, mitral stenosis was common in females, but mitral regurgitation in males. In only 10% of the patient will have a pure mitral stenosis. So most of the patients with mitral regurgitation will have another um, valve heart disease. This is often associated with mitral stenosis. <clears throat> Etiology is chronic pneumatic heart disease is very common with mitral valve prolapse, or it may be because of ischemia or myocardial infarction, congenital connective tissue disorders are also commonly associated with mitral regurgitation, or sometimes it may be iatrogenic after mitral valve repairment, uh, you may. Uh, the patient may have mitral regurgitation because of the procedure itself. Um, so here also that it's like um, you'll have a, um, as, I, as I told you, um, let's go to this one. Okay, so the this is, there's a regurgitative lesion over here. So when this, um, has to con con contract, then 
the actually the blood has to go through this aortic valve, but some blood will go into the atrium, left atrium. So there will be a dilated left atrium because of the wall overload. And patient may have um, dilated left ventricle, sometimes hypertrophic, but um, they will have dilated left ventricle and dilated left atrium over here. Mm, so clinical features are usually like similar to that of mitral stenosis, like fatigue. Uh, you have uh, dyspnea, orthopnea, PND, hemoptysis, uh, palpitation, and swelling of body. Symptoms of embolism is very very similar to that of mitral stenosis. Uh, you may have actual fibrillation, edema, zebulon will be raised. But here, what is what? And the important uh, differential points are that the apex state will be laterally displaced because of the um, because of this, this dilated left ventricle because of this dilated left ventricle the apex bit will be shifted laterally in mitral stenosis there won't be any displacement of apex bit there will be hyperdynamic apex bit if you remember. In, um, in mitral stenosis, it's a taping type of apex width, but here it's a hyperdynamic because of the volume, more volume. And there may be systolic thrill. In mitral stenosis, there was diastolic thrill. It may be palpable because, and there may be uh, leave also because of left ventricular tap or uh, pulmonary hypertension. S1 will be soft. Okay, in my mitral stenosis, but in mitral uh, sorry mitral uh, regurgitation, but in mitral stenosis, S1 is loud, and S3 may be present, and the presence of this S3 would say that mitral stenosis is of severe grade. There will be pansystolic murmur in the mitral area, and uh, uh, this will be radiated into axilla. And uh, if you remember, in vital stenosis, it's a mid diastolic murmur. So you may have peptidine, effusion, hepatomegaly, and ascites as a part of right ventricular hypertrophy. So with this, you will have a dilated left ventricle, dilated uh, left atrium. The pressure may be increased with features of left ventricle, left vent right ventricular failure as well. The, the S1 is soft, there will be pan-systolic murmur, which starts from the first half sound up to the second half sound, and there will be S3 as well. And A2 may be loud, sorry, P2 may be loud in these patients. <clears throat> in the investigation, it's uh, ECG, you'll have left hand atrial enlargement or hypertrophy. Actual fibrillation in the chest x ray, you would have a cardiomegaly calcification or signs of pulmonary hypertension. Uh, echo is the one which is very important over here, uh, so that you'll have, uh, uh, have a defects that can be documented and you can go for cardiac catheterization also. Usually, cardiac catheterization are uh, invasive ones, so. Um, Usually, cardiac section are done only when you are you are going for like some kind of operation, like mitral valve replacement, or for uh, for the um, for the uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, if the patient has the coronary artery disease, um, you want to um, do some like angiogram or angiography. Then at the same time, you go for cardiac catheterization also. <clears throat> Complications in fibrinogaritis, there may be features of uh, embolism like TIA, atrial fibrillation are very common, uh, are common complications. So for the severity of uh, mitral regurgitation, the S3 is very, uh, a very prominent finding. If you have an S3, then you say that it's a severe uh, MR. There are other like with the help of echo or with the help of uh, with the help of uh, cardiac catheterization, uh, you can uh, get the severity of my, my cardio, sorry, mitral regurgitation. 
And if the regurgitated volume is more than 50, 60 ml, then we also call it a severe mitral regurgitation. Management, medical and surgical, it's more like uh, <clears throat> depends upon what is the condition of the patient. Like uh, NYC class 3, 4 with pulmonary hypertension and marked increase in the LV and diastolic volume and decrease uh, uh, the ASX fraction, then it predicts that they, they are the poor survival in medical literature patients. Um, uh, in medical, it's similar to that. Digoxin, give diet beta blockers if they are in atrial fibrillation. Diuretics if they are in failure. Anticoagulants if uh, patient are in atrial fibrillation. Antibiotic prophylaxis for infective endocarditis. Here we generally consider for AC inhibitors, the AR, AR, ARBs, because we, we think that with the use of these AC inhibitors or ARBs, uh, the um, the uh, dilatation would occur less. In surgical, uh, you construct or drip less. These are the two options you will have, and this is uh, usually done in open surgeries. Mm, go for indications. So in mitral regurgitation, and we can have the uh, acute mitral regurgitation or it may be a chronic mitral regurgitation. Usually, acute mitral regurgitation are usually because of myocardial infarction. So, if you have an acute, uh, symptom will be almost always present. Chronic, it may be present or it will be present in a later part of the disease zone. Cardiac palpation, we may be unremarkable, but in chronic, there will be a displaced uh, hyperdynamic apical impulse. S1 will be soft in acute, and my chronic also it will be soft. Murmur, there will be a pan-systolic murmur. Uh, ECG would be normal in acute. I would say normal here. There may be features of myocardial infarction also, but in chronic you will have left ventricular hypertrophy and atrial fibrillation. In chest X-ray you you will have a normal heart shape size pulmonary edema, but in chronic you will have an enlarged heart. And echo LALB will be normal, in chronic it will be enlarged. In therapy, uh, in acute MR, you don't go for surgery and at, an, at that time itself, you would go, you give vasodilators, and in for chronic, you go for surgery. <clears throat> so, I think with this, I, I finished mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation, and uh, it's a pandemic time, so be informed about all the disease, be, you should be prepared and smart and stable, stay safe.